The Challenge of the Yukon. The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the Challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog king met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. As Sergeant Preston walked along Stovepipe City's main street, an icy wind whipped against the Mountie and the great dog walking beside him. Passing the frame building that was the Chilkoot Saloon, the policeman saw a tall, lanky prospector approaching. Hello there, Tom. Hi, Sergeant. Hey, this wind's enough to lift a man clear off his feet. How are you, King, old fellow? <laughs> well, I see you've got Marty with you. Sure, me and Marty are pals, huh, boy? <laughs> he's a smart dog, Sergeant. I always say he's the best in the Yukon. <laughs> then there are folks that insist he's second best. I'll agree, King's a handsome-looking animal. How's the claim coming? Fine. Sometimes I think I'm the luckiest man alive. <laughs> right now, I've got a pocket full of dust. And you're heading for a poker game, right? How'd you know? Well, let's just say I guessed. You know, one of these days, Tom, you're going to lose your shirt. Oh, uh, not me, Sergeant. Well, that's what they all say. But good luck anyway. Thanks. See you later. Drop into the saloon and watch me clean out the boys' pockets. At first, Tom McShane showed signs of keeping his threat to clean out the boys' pockets. But then, slowly and steadily, that illogical thing called luck turned against him. He lost what he'd won. He lost the dust he carried into the Chilkoot. Well, McShane, you ready to quit? No. No, I'm not quitting. My luck will change, Studs. Yeah? What are you putting in this time? I'll bet the Lady Luck claim against that 5000 you got in front of you. Looks like you lose. Wait a minute. I'm not through yet. No? Only thing you got left, McShane, is the clothes on your back and the, the dog sitting beside your chair. That's right, Tom. You still got Marty. Oh, no. What? Not Marty. <laughs> you never know. Your luck can change, kid. What do you expect me to do? Play the lady luck against his dog? Ain't no reason why you shouldn't. You got more now than you walked in here with. Darn good-looking dog for my money. <laughs> what about it, McShane? All right, Studs. I'll play this hand for Marty. Yeah, here's my share. It's your deal, Studs. It was an old story in the Yukon, where stakes were high and a fabulously wealthy prospector could lose over a deck of cards the gold he'd patiently worked from the rich soil over a period of weeks, sometimes months. Tom McShane realized he'd not only lost the Lady Luck claim, but his dog Marty as well. And the realization was followed by a desolate ache that burned his eyes like unshed tears. When he stood and walked quickly toward the door, Marty followed him. Hey, there goes your dog, Stud. Oh, no, he ain't. Come back here, you mutt. Don't ever call that dog a mutt, Stud, you hear? He's mine now, and I'll call him when I like. Oh! Listen, Marty. I don't know why I did it, boy, but you and me can't be together anymore. Understand? Maybe, maybe I'll be able to scrape up enough money, and I'll buy you back again. <laughs> I'd better grab hold of his collar. So when he makes up his mind, there ain't much can hold him back. Come on, stud. Let well, us change hands once tonight. I'm going to see if I can't make it twice. I'm holding him, McShane. <laughs> so long, Marty. I... Oh! 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 next morning, when Sergeant Preston went to see Tom McShane, he found him in a friend's cabin where he'd been staying while he remained in Stovepipe City. Well, I heard all about it, Tom. Yeah. Marty came back last night? Uh-huh. Stud just came and got him. It's a funny thing. A man can switch his loyalties or forget. But a dog never does. How do you think I feel? Losing the Lady Luck was bad enough, but... But Marty... Well, Studs didn't hold the Lady Luck very long. 
Fred told me that shortly after you got out of the game, he won the claim for Malone. A good bit of the dust he'd accumulated. Oh, I'll never touch another card as long as I live. I've learned my lesson, Sergeant. Malone was in a pretty mean humor. He always is when he starts losing. He took it out on Marty when he found him here this morning. Yes, I think you have learned your lesson, Tom. You know, gambling had begun to be an obsession with you. I watched it grow, and I knew it would take something important to make you stop. You've learned your lesson, and you'll miss Marty. But that's only half of it. Marty's going to bear the other half, and I'm afraid it won't be easy. And Sergeant Preston was right. As long as Tom McShane stayed in Stove Pipe City, Marty returned to his master. No matter what punishment he received from Studs Malone, the dog's faithfulness never flinched. Finally, when he saw the hopelessness of the situation, Tom left the small settlement. And a short time later, Malone also left, taking with him the dog he'd won in the poker game. Malone had had much bad luck since that night at Chilkoot Saloon. But though he lost everything else, he had a good dog, and he knew he'd need him. As the months passed, Studs Malone taught the dog Marty the things that were to make him hated by men who traveled lonely Yukon trails. The dog performed his tasks half-heartedly, knowing that this man would deal with him mercilessly if he refused. At a camp along an isolated trail shortly before darkness, two trappers sat beside the fire. Hey, Jim, what was that? Huh? I heard something. Listen, I'll see what it is. Well, I hope he... Sam, somebody's been into the ration. Right, by golly. Took all the meat we had. But how to... Look, beyond the trail over there. The dog. Boy, that dirty four-legged thief. I'm... Ah, you missed him. Mm-hmm. Must have been that outlaw dog we heard about in Three Forks. I'd like to catch up with that mutt just once. I'd fill him so full of buckshot, he'd only be good for paperweight. At Three Forks, the head of the Law and Order Commission talked to Sergeant Preston. With the Mountie was Tom McShane, who stood silently listening to the conversation. We have definite information, Sergeant, that the dog is in this vicinity. The description I've given you is one we've gotten from several men who had misfortune to meet him. I know the dog. We'll set out immediately. Well, if you don't mind, I'll get a few of my men together and we'll go with you. Stealing food in the Yukon is a serious offense. And in this case, it's led to the death of two prospectors. Sergeant Preston and Tom McShane, with a small group of men, set out to locate the outlawed dog and his master. King ran far ahead of the Mounties team, pausing at intervals to let the sled catch up with him. At one point along the trail, the policeman called a halt while he examined what had apparently been a campsite. The men of the Law and Order Commission gathered to look at tracks. It was then that King noticed Tom McShane's sled pulling away from the rest of them. I see him, fella. Let him go. I have a hunch he's trying to do some private detective work. But I think he's chosen the right direction. We'll start after him in a few minutes. Tom McShane approached the camp near the edge of Blackstone Creek quietly. He noticed the ledge jutting out over the creek just a few yards away from a stretch of rapids. It was there Studs Malone stood when the young man confronted him. Well, Studs, it seems we meet again. Who's that? Well, it ain't my friend, the prize poker player. Don't reach for your gun. I've got you covered. Uh, so I noticed. What do you got in your mind, McShane? Where's Marty? Oh, that's it, huh? Well, he's out on a little job. Probably getting some fresh air. Why, you... <laughs> you made him the hunted creature that he is. That dog didn't have a bad streak in him. No, and he learned pretty fast. You ain't going to fire that gun, McShane, and you know it. No. I'm not going to kill you, Studs. I ought to, but I won't. I'll just stay here and keep you... Yeah, from... Get away from me. Get away or I'll... You what? I'll take that gun. No, you don't. You... As the two men fought, Studs Malone edged his opponent nearer and nearer to the creek. 
Beneath them, under the ledge, the waters rushed dizzily toward the rapids. Malone had the advantage of greater strength, but Tom McShane refused to admit defeat. Every blow must count. It was then he heard a dog racing toward them through the timber. Marty! That's all I need. Yeah, you did me a good turn that time, Mutt, when he turned to look for you. Kind of hard to swim, weighted down with a mac and oil in it. You'll be pulled over the rapids, McShane, before you... Before the man could finish the sentence, he saw Marty leap over the ledge. And once in the icy water, the dog swam toward Tom McShane. All right, Judge, put up your hands. Preston! Yes. You know this man from the description, Hibbs? Yes, yes, of course. But where's the dog? Hey, look there. Out in the creek, over top of the rapids. There's a man in there. He'll be drowned. Trust me, Lord, Jim. Lots of them come down the creek and get smashed going over the rapids. Put the handcuffs on this man. They will be... It is a man. Uh, it's your friend McShane, Molly. He, uh, he fell over the ledge. But there's a dog. That's Marty. Marty's pulling him away from the rapids. Hey, there's your outlaw dog. That's the one I saw myself. The great dog King stood on the ledge. His eyes glued to the two figures caught in the treacherous current. The spray from the rapids rose slightly beyond them. It was a mad swirl of water, and the men watching held their breath. And then it happened. King saw it first. The log caught in the current, zigzagging crazily in the chopping water. As Marty swam, he struggled desperately. The log seemed about to skirt the man and his rescuer, when it veered sharply, striking the dog's head and knocking him senseless. <laughs> Almost instantly, King hit the icy water. He was caught in the current, but he fought it, struggling to reach the man who was frantically trying to keep it close. And as Tom reached out to grab King, the great dog felt the impact as Marty was helplessly thrown against his master. Scarcely knowing what he did, the man put one arm around his dog's neck, and with the other, he held fast to King. And King knew he must drain every ounce of strength to pull his double burden to safety. Halfway toward the rocks, where Preston stood, Marty began to swim. King had battled the current to pull them away from the rapids. And now they pulled slowly but steadily toward the ledge. Hey, you, Jim, get a stout piece of rope to the slant. That's it, fella. Keep pulling, boy. It was a short time later. And on the ledge, close to Preston's feet, King lay exhausted. He felt his strength coming back to him, and he looked up to find Marty, a heap of wet, straggly fur, laying close to his master, a dog's nose beside the face of the man he loved. Oh, I still think he ought to be shot. He's alive, thanks to your dog, Sergeant. Stealing food in the Yukon, same as murder. Oh, no. no, don't. Don't let him. Jim, I want to ask you a question. What would be your verdict toward a man who was basically good, but fell into bad company and became an outlaw? And then what would you say if you saw that man make an attempt to save a life at the cost of his own? I, well, I'd say he ought to... Well, he ought to be given more than a fair chance. Exactly. You saw this dog make a brave attempt to save Tom's life. There's the criminal. Stud, you're under arrest. And as for Marty, he's going to be paroled to Tom. Sergeant, I... <laughs> and Mountie saw the gratitude in Tom McShane's eyes. And he saw, too, the unquestioning devotion shining in the eyes of the dog when he looked at his master. Preston turned and looked at King. And as he felt the great dog's warm tongue touch his hand, he appreciated the bond that existed between this man and Marty. That's all right, Tom. I understand. Yes, fellow, you've done a great job. The case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. Jack McCarthy.